uh, uh, Black, Asian, and ethnic marginalized communities are been are disproportionately affected uh, by STIs, and BHA created this tailored uh, resource to ensure people uh, have the tools and the knowledge. Uh, for prevention and testing uh, in the way for to reduce this um, inequality. We have uh, translated this booklet in three different languages, uh, Urdu, Farsi, and Portuguese, in an effort to improve the access to information, uh, to the service uses that we work, uh, and that don't have the English as first language. This resource was created within the Hive project. Um, so within the Hive project, I would like uh, a special mention and a thank you to Vicky Morris, that was the former um, Hive manager for all the support that she gave us to create the resource. There's other people that uh, support us in the design, the creation, the review, the content. But I'll let uh, Beth, uh, uh, to say the, all the acknowledgements and to say thank you to them when she does her presentation. Um, this event will start with uh, the, our panelist, the uh, first one, John Don. Um, John Don, <laughs> that is the UK Health, that works for the UK Health Security Agency. Um, he's been, he's always supported us and uh, even interviewed the content. Thank you for, for accepting our in invite to attend to, the, to this uh, uh, launch of this new resource. And then after, uh, we'll follow with uh, Beth. So Beth um, is works for BHA for Equality, our HIV testing lead, and was always working in, with the um, in the content to the STI booklet, and so she'll present the booklet itself, and also other resources that we created uh, from uh, the content that was created in the STI booklet. Uh, the last part will have like a Q and A, um, so around fifteen minutes for any questions you want to put in the panel. So uh, I'll pass now to John. Brilliant. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you, Bethany. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, as Elizabeth said, uh, my name is John Dunn. I'm the Sexual Health Facilitator for the Northwest. I work for uh, UKHSA. And I've been asked to come today to talk a little bit about uh, STIs um, in the uh, Northwest uh, with a focus on uh, Greater Manchester. So if you just bear with me one second, I'm not used to Losing, uh, using Zoom. I'm just going to uh, open up um, my, just bear with me one second. No, hold on. Sorry, I did practice this a moment ago. Let me try one more time. Bethany, can you see a PowerPoint? No, I can't. I think... So typical, it was working five minutes ago, wasn't it? Yeah, we did it five minutes ago. Exactly. Try again. Sorry, everybody. Any luck now? No. Are you sharing your screen or the um the PowerPoint? Um, I'm trying to share my screen. Um oh. Okay, um, I was saying that to pass first to Beth for if he's working can, now. Can yes. you see something? Now. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Fantastic. Panic over. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. I'm just going to spend uh, 10 minutes or so uh, just talking about uh, STIs in the northwest of England. Um, I'm going to focus on gonorrhea and syphilis 
um, but I will touch on other infections and also HIV uh, at the end. But I just wanted to start off by uh, talking about uh, delivery and sexual health services uh, in the Northwest. And you can see there that there was a reduction in the number of consultations carried out at services in 2022, down 8% compared to 2021 and 10%, uh, 11% lower uh, compared to uh, 2019. But uh, we saw an increase in the number of uh, full sexual health screens uh, carried out uh, last year. Uh, that was up 2% to 197,615, higher than 20, uh, 2021, uh, but still a little lower than 2019. But we also saw uh, quite a large increase in diagnoses of uh, certain STIs uh, to residents of the Northwest. Overall, uh, there was a 35% increase in diagnoses of all new STIs at Sessional Health Services. That number increased from 36,000 to 49,000 in 2022. Uh, but it was still at 10% lower than the number that we saw in 2019. But looking at individual infections, you can see there uh, a really uh, large increase in diagnosis of gonorrhea. So the numbers increased from just over 5,000 in 2021 to 9,840 in 2022, 93% increase. Also, we saw a large increase of around about a third in terms of diagnosis of chlamydia to residents of the Northwest, and an increase of around about 15% um, in terms of diagnosis of infectious syphilis. And looking at England overall, for gonorrhea, uh, it was the largest number of annual diagnoses since records began in 1918, uh, and for syphilis, the largest annual number since 1948. Um, this uh, table shows the number of uh, selected STIs and the rate per 100,000 uh, for uh, a number of uh, STIs. I just want to draw your attention to uh, genital warts. And you can see there, looking at the uh, left of the screen, um, a reduction in the number of uh, new episodes, uh, cases of new episodes, uh, first episode genital warts. Um, and that's really a continuation of the trend that we've observed um, over the last decade, um, in part to do with the a protective uh, effect of the HPV vaccination program, um, both the adolescent program for uh, girls and our boys as well, uh, and also the uh, program delivered within sexual health services for gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men. Just a note on the HIV data um, all of the data uh, for all STIs here, um, uh, the source of the data is specialist sexual health services. With the exception of HIV and the numbers you can see there are HIV diagnoses in all settings. I will talk about HIV towards the end um, of this uh, session, uh, but you can see there um, we had a, a small reduction in the number and rate of new HIV diagnoses in the Northwest in 2022. So just looking at the, the Northwest uh, as a whole, uh, this is the rate and number of diagnoses of all uh, new STIs. And you can see there for the 25 local authorities uh, in the Northwest, all local authorities saw an increase in the rate of new STI diagnoses in 2022 compared to 2021, with um, uh, Halton, Oldham and Rochdale seeing the biggest percentage increases and the smallest percentage increases have uh, been seen uh, in Wirral, St Helens and Westmoreland and Furness. But if we look at the top of the table, we can see the, um, the number of diagnoses and the rate of diagnoses for uh, our largest cities and conurbations. So you can see there the rate highest uh, in the cities of Liverpool at Manchester and Salford, uh, with uh, rate um, also being high in Blackpool. So just want to talk a little bit about gonorrhea uh, for a few moments. Um, so this chart, uh, the bars show the number of diagnoses to uh, residents of Greater Manchester, focusing on, on GM for a moment. And the lines uh, show the uh, diagnosis rate uh, for Greater Manchester, the Northwest and for England. And you can see there the purple line, uh, the rate for Greater Manchester in 2022 uh, was higher uh, than the overall rate for rates for the Northwest and for uh, England uh, overall. Uh, for Greater Manchester, again, uh, in line with the 
overall picture for the northwestern for England, uh, we saw an increase in that rate um, from 2021 to 2022 of around about 87 percent. So just want to talk a little bit about uh, diagnoses to our population groups. Uh, so you can see there um, on the uh, top uh, left hand um, of the screen, you can see an increase uh, in diagnoses both to uh, men and to women uh, from 2021 to 2022. A 103% increase in diagnoses to women compared to a 68% increase in diagnoses uh, to men. And if you look at the uh, chart on the bottom uh, left hand side, uh, this is um, sexual orientation uh, of patients diagnosed with gonorrhea. Um, the, there was a, uh, just shy of a 100% increase, a 99% increase in diagnosis to heterosexual women uh, from 2021 to 2022, uh, a 70% increase uh, for heterosexual men, and a 62% increase for um, uh, gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men. Looking at the top right, um, we can see um, that the biggest increases were to, to younger people, uh, people under the age of 24. Uh, you can see that the purple uh, line, uh, 25 to 34 year olds, the orange line uh, to 20 to 24 year olds. And just in terms of diagnoses, um, the largest number of diagnoses to uh, people of white ethnicity. But if we look at the uh, rate um, per 100,000 um, of the population. Again, at the bottom left-hand screen, you can see uh, the line for gay perception of the men who have sex with men, clearly indicating uh, a community. Um, uh, 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 the burden of gonorrhea is greatest among that community. And then if we look across to um, uh, ethnicity at the bottom uh, right-hand side, you can see that the rate for people of white ethnicity is lower than the rates for people of uh, black uh, mix and other ethnicities. So um, again, just looking at uh, the Northwest, similar pattern to the uh, table we looked at before, uh, looking at the, the cities in Blackpool, um, you can see that there the uh, rates were, were highest. Uh, looking across um, all of the 25 local authorities for Greater Manchester, again, uh, every local authority saw an increase in their rate of diagnosis of gonorrhea in 2022. Um, with the largest increases being observed in Blackpool, Darwin, uh, Berry, uh, and Halton in Cheshire and Merseyside, uh, with the lowest uh, percentage increases being observed in Trafford, uh, Thameside, and Manchester. Um, I'm going to just move on to, to look at syphilis. Apologies, I can only see um, what I'm presenting. Um, I can't see uh, any questions in the chat. Just looking at uh, syphilis, again, this is data for uh, Greater Manchester in the bars. Uh, you can see there that there um, uh, a small increase in the number of diagnoses to residents of Greater Manchester from 517 in 2021 to 549 in, in uh, 2022. And again, looking at the rate, the rate for Greater Manchester higher than the rate for uh, the Northwest and England as a whole, but a much smaller uh, increase uh, compared to um, the increase that we observed for our gonorrhea. Again, looking at um, this, uh, the number of diagnoses of infections uh, syphilis. Uh, again, you can see, um, uh, you can see there, um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought there. Um, if you look at the uh, top uh, left-hand corner, uh, looking at gender, you can see there that um, most of the diagnoses of infectious syphilis in 2022, and indeed for all of that time period, were to, to men. And in 2022 specifically, 93% um, of all diagnoses of infectious syphilis uh, to residents of the Northwest uh, were to men. Looking at the bottom uh, left-hand side, looking at sexual orientation, um, uh, you can see there, again, relatively high numbers for gay perception of the men who have sex with men, who accounted for 87% of all diagnoses uh, to men uh, in 2022. Now, interestingly, um, uh, the opposite is true. Uh, the opposite of what we ob observed with gonorrhea, uh, we can see if we look at age, with the um, biggest increases uh, from 2020 uh, onwards uh, being observed in slightly older people, um, so people uh, 35 to 44 um, in the green, 
um, 25 to 34 uh, in the, the purple and 45 to 64 in the blue. And again, um, the majority of uh, diagnoses were to people of white ethnicity. But again, if we look at the, the right and the bottom uh, right hand um, of the screen, looking at ethnicity, again, you can see um, that uh, the steepest uh, increases in the rate of diagnoses of served in people of black eth ethnicity, mixed ethnicity, and uh, quite a jump there uh, for people of uh, other ethnicity, uh, comparing 2021 with 2022. Um, again, the 25 uh, local authorities are in the northwest. Again, a similar picture as uh, South of Manchester, Liverpool, having the highest rates of uh, diagnoses of uh, syphilis. Uh, but interesting, um, we have seen uh, a reduction uh, in some areas of the, the northwest and increases in others. So you can see that looking at Blackburn and Darwin again, a 475% uh, increase um, in their rate of diagnosis. Uh, again, relatively small numbers. Uh, that's four diagnoses in 2021 to 23 diagnoses in uh, 2022. But we have seen uh, at the local authorities where um, uh, either a, a modest uh, reduction uh, in uh, number and rate or a, a more dramatic reduction, as you can see uh, by looking at the right hand side of the screen. Um, I just want to make a, a few points uh, about uh, gonorrhea and, and syphilis to uh, summary uh, to summarise. As uh, so looking at gonorrhea, we can see a high proportion of diagnoses of gonorrhea are to uh, men who are gay, sexual, or have sex with other men. 40% uh, of the total uh, for the Northwest compared to 55% of the total uh, for England, uh, with the highest diagnoses uh, to uh, young adults uh, in their 20s. And in terms of ethnicity, uh, people of Black Caribbean ethnicity, um, the rate uh, uh, highest uh, diagnostic uh, rates. For gonorrhea, uh, we know that antimicrobial resistance uh, is an increasing concern, so an imperative there really to uh, try to uh, reduce uh, the prevalence um, of gonorrhea um, and uh, to interrupt uh, transmission. Looking at syphilis, um, again, uh, as I said, a uh, high proportion of diagnoses were to gay perception that the men have sex with men. 86% uh, of the total for the Northwest for GBMSM uh, compared to 79% for, for England. Again, slightly older people uh, 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 being diagnosed, uh, men in their mid 30s uh, onwards. And as we saw, um, uh, highest diagnostic rates in people of other ethnicity. And again, syphilis is a concern, uh, we know, uh, particularly at uh, the risk of long-term uh, impacts uh, on health um, if uh, we don't have a prompt uh, detection and treatment um, of syphilis. So um, just because we've had uh, uh, the HIV data for 2022 came out uh, a few weeks ago, um, I just want to uh, talk through um, uh, just a few key points um, for, for HIV. And again, as I said at the beginning, uh, we saw uh, a slight reduction in the number of people uh, resident in the Northwest receiving a new uh, HIV diagnosis in 2020. 49. Uh, but if we look back over time to the peak um, in 2014, uh, where we uh, saw 409, sorry, 598 people uh, receiving a new HIV diagnosis. Uh, comparing 2014 with 2022, 40% um, 42 percent uh, fewer people uh, received a new HIV diagnosis uh, in that most recent period. Again, um, this is new HIV diagnosis to uh, people um, the northwest, and again, if we look at uh, gender um, in the uh, top left-hand uh, corner. Uh, we can see a slight reduction in the number of men receiving new HIV diagnosis, but we're seeing an increase in the number of women uh, receiving uh, a new HIV diagnosis. And if we look across the right-hand side um, to look at um, uh, exposure by uh, sexual contact, uh, we can see for uh, men, uh, both for gay perception and other uh, men have sex with men, uh, in blue and heterosexual men uh, in green, a uh, reduction from 2021 to 2022, uh, but an increase in the number of women uh, thought to have acquired uh, HIV through uh, heterosexual uh, sex. 
I just want to make one point about location of initial HIV diagnosis. So when we talk about new HIV diagnosis, we are effectively referring to people who've never had a, a HIV positive test result uh, in the, the UK. So these are people who are, have never uh, had a, a HIV diagnosis, but also are people who um, have moved into the UK uh, from abroad uh, with diagnosed HIV. And you can see there, again, this is data for the Northwest. Uh, in orange, we can see the number of people receiving their first uh, diagnosis in the in the UK. So a reduction uh, from 2021 to 2022 from 269 to 230, a 14% reduction in people are first diagnosed in the UK. Um, a different picture, though, when we look at people first diagnosed abroad. So you can see there um, from 2022 onwards a slight uptick in the number of people uh, moving into the UK uh, with diagnosed uh, HIV um, and then uh, accessing uh, HIV treatment and care uh, within England. Um, and just looking um, again just for, for, for Greater Manchester um, just to uh, illustrate um, that for all of the 10 uh, local authorities uh, in Greater Manchester, you can see, uh, with the exception of Berry, uh, actually, uh, that um, some of the people um, newly diagnosed with HIV, um, they include people both diagnosed for the first time uh, in the UK and people uh, diagnosed abroad. And uh, a final slide, I think, um, this just demonstrates, again, for... Uh, Greater Manchester on the left-hand side, but also the map of the northwest um, on the, the right. Uh, you can see there uh, the new HIV diagnosis among uh, people are first diagnosed uh, with uh, HIV. Um, and I think uh, that's all I'm going to talk through. Um, I don't know if this will be shared afterwards. i uh, very uh, happy for it to be. Um, and uh, there's uh, useful contacts there. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Uh, I'm back to see Bethany. Thank you, John, for the data. Because do the data is always important to understand actually what resources we need, um, what actually groups that uh, we need to target more, and it's um, very visible that Black, Asian, and other ethnic marginalized communities. Uh, having um, an impact in terms of increasing of number of STIs, including gonorrhea, syphilis, and HIV. Uh, so I'll pass now uh, be, uh, to Beth, because Beth will explain um, the booklet STI, um, your guide to STIs, that's almost um, a way of BHA trying to, to tackle these issues in terms of um, finding ways of improving information, how uh, people can have access to, to treatment testing, where they can have access, how they can know more about the STIs. So now I'll pass to Beth. Thanks, Elizabeth. And thank you so much, John. Um, that was like, it's really important to understand the data and why we do the work that we do. Um, so before I show everyone the booklet, which we're very excited to be launching today, I just wanted to say um, a variety of thank yous for everyone who supported us with the design and development of this booklet. Um, firstly, I'm going to go to John because you were absolutely fantastic. <laughs> it's so helpful um, with kind of helping us develop this and make sure that we had all our facts right and we had really important information. Also our PASH partners, um, so we have um, the LGBT Foundation and George House Trust. The clinical partners at the Northern Sexual Health were vital in making sure all of this information is uh, factually correct and um, up to clinical standards. Um, and also Vicky Morris, I know I know Elizabeth's already got in there, but I just wanted to say thank you to you because you were just great and also uh, Richard Scarborough. Um, but yes, thank you to everyone because this really was a team effort, which is why it feels so exciting to launch this today. Um, one uh, thing I'd like to talk about what the aim of this booklet is. So the aim of our booklet here is to 
raise awareness of STIs and STI symptoms, because although um, many of you know, most STIs don't always show symptoms, the symptoms that they do show can also be signs of um, reproductive cancers or infections or conditions. So really what we want to do is to make sure people in our, uh, the communities that we work with are aware of these symptoms. So if they do notice anything, they speak to a doctor sooner. We want to destigmatize STIs and HIV. We want to raise um, awareness around testing and just really increase education around health. So um, we do have this resource in English, but we've also decided to translate it into three other languages. And those languages were Urdu, Farsi and Portuguese. Now, um, as we can see, that um, it tends to be black communities that have most been disproportionately affected uh, by STIs. But when we were doing our research, we found that many, like a majority of black communities tend to speak pretty like various le like good levels of English. And we really wanted to make sure that this resource was accessible for all. So we went through uh, the Greater Man Manchester census data, through all of the top languages um, spoken in the different boroughs. And we also went through data um, through our work at BHA, what the most common languages were, which is where we going for those ones. So the booklet has, it's a 12 page booklet. Um, it's quite a, a nice structure. So we've structured it into four sections. So we have um, the first section, which is STI awareness. So the kind of the who, what, where and why of STIs, the symptoms and key information. Then we have a section on prevention. Um, so condom, PrEP, PEP, testing. So how to test, where to test. And then finally, we do some myth busting. So with that all said, I will now present the booklet and then I will also present some of the resources that have come out of this booklet as well. Okay. Okay. So I've gone to the BHA website, which I'll be sending to everyone after this. It's really easy to find our resources. So if we go up to our services, you can scroll down and we have lots of other fantastic resources in different languages as well. Now, um, We've created a resource pack in all of the languages that is really easy to download. Um, and then we have each language as a resource pack as well. Now you can view the booklet here. So I will just go through that to move everyone there. Um, we've gone for a lovely, brightly coloured front cover because we find that um, through our work, this seems to be the best way to kind of get people interested in information if you make it pretty. So the first page we have notes um, for people to write any notes if they do notice anything. This is our um, STI awareness section. So we talk about what is a sexually transmitted infection? How can it pass on? Who can get an STI? So as we know, everyone, uh, anyone and everyone can. Um, whether, which ones can be cured um, and which ones can't because um, with um, resistance and HIV and HSV, not all of them can be cured. How they impact the health and how to know. Now, most STIs don't show symptoms, which will be a common theme in this book, um, but the ones that we do have are just here. Now, although we have chosen to translate this language, uh, this booklet into several languages, not everyone will be able to speak those languages fluently. So we've really focused on having clear um, visuals for this to help people recognize signs and symptoms, um, which has so far in our work has really helped. We've done sessions with these and um, I personally have been with uh, one woman who was looking at this and noticed some of them herself. So, so far so good, it's been fantastic. Then onto the next page, we have a lovely table, again, with lots of clear icons with all of the different STIs, how they are caught, what their symptoms are, their diagnosis, their treatment. And then we have some further information around complications. We added this in because we really want to raise awareness um, because STIs don't show symptoms of what can happen if they're left untreated, highlighting the importance of testing. Then we go to our prevention section, uh, which is one of my favorite sections. And I am really excited to have this translated in so many different languages, specifically information about PrEP and PEP. So we have this fantastic little demonstration on how to put on condoms, which um, we had commissioned by an illustrator because we find it really important that when we show skin tone, we do show demonstrations on non-white skin. We have information about PrEP, PEP, 
Uh, cleaning sex toys, which is a very important in terms of just general hygiene and also uh, prevention techniques. Uh, vaginal herbs and fogging. Um, so unfortunately, vaginal tightening creams um, are available and can be very dangerous. So we wanted to make sure we added in this. And then we also have a section about the safest way to clean. Um, and this came up through our kind of group sessions in the community of information. We have information about um, the vaccines, the HPV vaccine, um, as John said, the, um, how much the HPV vaccine has helped reduce genital warts, but also cancer. What to do if we, you think you've been exposed and the importance of regular testing and the very important undetectable and untransmittable message around HIV. Then we have our testing section. So this explains where you can get an STI test, which also talks about community testing, which is something we at BHA offer, um, but many other charities do as well. Uh, we know that many people in the communities that we work with um, are a bit fearful about going to a sexual health clinic. They don't want to be seen there. So we really wanted to highlight the different testing offers um, out there in Greater Manchester. We have this fantastic graph that um, clearly explains window periods. Um, often it can be a little bit complicated to explain window periods. So we love we love a graph um, and it's been really helpful to us in our HIV testing clinics to and when we test for STIs to clearly explain how long you have to wait after having sex till you can test. We have information about what to do if you test positive, confidentiality, um, requests, so um, translation requests, or um, if you'd like to be seen by a male or female doctor. And then we also have some information and questions you'll be asked if you do attend a sexual health clinic. Um, we understand that these questions might feel quite personal, um, but we think it's really important to raise awareness for people to know what they'll be asked ahead of time so they, they can prepare. And also we have information about samples and a few kind of tips and tricks before you go. And then finally in our booklet, we have uh, commonly asked questions. Now, these are questions that we often find are asked of us in the community and also little snippets of info that are really important to know, like um, how condoms don't protect against all SP um, STIs because we have HS HSV and HPV, so gentle warts. Um, we talk about how it's not only gay, gay men who get HIV, because that's a common kind of myth, um, whether or not you need to test if you're married or in a monogamous relationship um, and other prevention myths. Then at the back, we have a fantastic section which just gives people further information. So where they can find their nearest sexual health service, more information on STIs, and then the PASH partnership um, to find out more information about testing. So that was really a whistle stop store, um, whist sorry, whistle stop tour of um, the booklet. Um, everyone will be sent the link afterwards. So please feel free to have a look through in your own time, have a read because it really is interesting. And outside of this, we also have created a variety of resources because not everyone um, can kind of has time to read through a booklet. So what we've done is we've taken what I uh, we believe are the most important um, facts and information from the guide and we've created them into downloadable posters which are available to download through the resource packs. So these are PDFs, they print out onto A4 or A5, and so they can be handed out easily in the community. So the first, oh, I'm just going to have to minimize that. There we go. The first we have is STI info. So this is in the Portuguese, Urdu and Farsi. So we have the top symptoms of STIs, but also the conditions and cancers I was speaking about earlier how they can be passed on, how to know. Then we have the condom guide, which is one of the things I'm most excited about with this project. It's a really simple guide on how to correctly put a condom on, which talks about things like making sure it's in, ex um, in the expiration date, you're checking the kite mark, we're putting it on the right way, and also the safe removal. So not, not flushing it down the toilet, making sure it's taken off properly. We also have a poster on prevention methods. So these talk about condoms, PrEP, the pill that you can take to prevent HIV, PEP, the pill that could be taken after um, having unprotected sex if you're worried you have H um, HIV, and also vaginal tightening creams and herbs. We've also created a poster for the wind testing window periods. So these are fantastic to have in sexual health clinics. Um, so it goes through the different window periods for each of the STIs and BBVs. And again, we have them in all of the languages available to download. 
And then finally, we have um, a poster about exploring STIs. So this is the STI table that's in the booklet that has all of the symptoms that are listed um, below, how they can be diagnosed and how they're caused. So we've created a whole variety of resources from this and we I strongly encourage everyone to share them, to download them, to print them um, and really kind of spread, spread the awareness. So that is our guide. I will pass back to Elizabeth. Thank you, Beth. Uh, I think it was very clear um, and very visual so people can see actually how is the booklet and uh, all the other resources like posters that you can use uh, in the community and very easy to start conversation and explain information about STIs. Um, so now we'll have like a, um, some minutes for questions that you want to put in the panel. Um, I can see already one question here um that I'll read uh, so uh, you can put questions um on the chat box or if you actually want to to speak you can just raise your hands and I'll pass you the word I'll pass you to you to speak so first when prep become more commonly used did the numbers of other STIs such as gonorrhea increase in MSM will the number of new uh, cases of HIV reduced. I think believe this is a question for John. Um, and then we have. Um, don't know if you want to answer this, John. Yes, sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is interesting. So you know, clearly two things are happening um, in parallel to to one another. Um, so we're seeing uh, an increase in the number of people uh, choosing to, to use PrEP. Uh, that's now moved from something that was available as part of trial uh, to something that's now uh, routinely available uh, in our specialist uh, sexual health services. And uptake's been uh, good, uh, particularly among gay sexual and other many health sex with men. Um, lower numbers of uh, people um, in other at-risk groups uh, opting to, to use PrEP at the moment though. So that's uh, something, uh, I guess that's an opportunity for us to, to think about how we uh, further promote PrEP. Um, it's true that we're also seeing uh, increasing diagnoses of uh, selected uh, STIs, uh, so uh, gonorrhea and syphilis, uh, as I talked through. Um, but interestingly, and again, if we, we look at gonorrhea, there has been a, a, a slight increase in um, uh, diagnosis to gay bisexual men have said this group men, the group who um, are the uh, I, I guess uh, the biggest group using using PrEP but interestingly for gonorrhea in the northwest we saw the biggest increases in young uh, heterosexual adults um, so I'm kind of I guess you know I think you know uh, uh, the use of PrEP may be a, a drop off in terms of condom use um, maybe having an impact on um, our transmission um, of other STIs. But I think in many ways, we still need to kind of test some of that out a little bit. And, you know, we see, you know, quite a lot of work looking at sort of prep. Um, but I think I'm interested in looking at attitudes and um, use of sort of condoms and see whether, um, you know, that hypothesis that uh, fewer people choosing to use condoms is, is actually true. Um, so going around uh, about the houses there. So um, uh, so I, I think, yes, partly um, uh, HIV prep is, could be associated with increasing those other STIs if it's accompanied by maybe a drop off in, in terms of condom use. Thank you. Um, we have some uh, um, other comments uh, saying that they love the po booklets and posters and are brilliant resources. Um, Heather, also thank you, John, for your answer. And we also have a question that is, what communities are you trying to reach? Uh, I think I heard that it's been translated into three languages. So maybe uh, Beth and myself can answer that. Um, so the communities that we are trying to reach are um, essentially non-white British communities, so um, Black, Asian, of the minoritized ethnic communities, and that's why we did choose to um, translate it into the languages that we have chosen, so say we've chosen Farsi, Urdu, and Portuguese. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if Elizabeth would like to expand a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the, this 
three specific languages that we choose because one is the number uh, of um, Urdu, um, Farsi, and Portuguese speakers, uh, the ones that is in census, but also the ones that we usually are in the community and uh, we feel that there's a need to translate. In terms of STI rates, uh, it's e higher in Black um, black African, Black Black uh, Caribbean, and also South Asian. So there's increase also in, this, in these three groups, as like John Don showed the data. Um, so uh, just for example, in terms of uh, um, English that we usually now will share also the booklet, we have like high rates of uh, people from West Africa uh, that majority speak um, English and, uh, and Portuguese. So countries like um, um, Angola, Mozambique, so the English, Zimbabwe, uh, Malawi already um, speak English, so we have like the resource in English that we can share with the illustrations that people have more difficulties uh, to understand, uh, and then the Urdu and Farsi also for the communities that we are encountering in the community that need this support. I hope that we were able to, to uh, reply to the yeah. And I think it's um, some of the languages that we have the most request for as well, because we work in um, throughout Greater Manchester, um, we do get requests for translated languages. So we took that into consideration, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we have here uh, the question that is, can you tell us a bit about the campaign work you did on social media and the, with influencer as part of this project? Uh, so um, this this um, resource was linked is also linked with the project that we've done about STIs um, in Black Caribbean communities. Um, was focused in Manchester the project, and we launched like a um, campaign with the social media influencers. Um, the social media influencers was to raise awareness of our STIs. Um, we did like we created like. Um, posters and uh, we ask uh, influencers in the community, both other leaders from black communities to create a campaign. Uh, of course, that we linked um, this campaign with the STI, the booklet, um, so people can know actually there's um, resources available so people can actually have more information, how to have access to service, how to test and how to prevent of STIs. Not sure if you want to add anything else. Beth. I think I think you covered it all there. Yes, it was a fantastic campaign. Uh, we did lots of community based work as well. And um, like we did community outreach alongside. Mm -hmm. um, I'll read uh, the last one just because we are almost ending. Um, great. Sorry. Uh, great work in responding to provide uh, good quality information in timely way for community disproportionately affected by STIs. Thank you. And uh, John Don just shared uh, uh, information about uh, um, more information about 22 uh, STI data in the annual STI annual report. So um, I want to thank everyone for attending. Uh, don't want. I want to know if there are any final um, words from Beth or John. I'll let Beth go first. Um, really just a, a thank you to everyone who was a, a part of this um, project. It was really, it was really enjoyable to work on. Uh, very interesting. And yeah, I think the, the resources that we've created outside of the guide as well, um, I think they'll be fantastic in the community. Thank and you. just from me, just to thank you both, uh, both for organizing the webinar today but for also for developing uh, the resource uh, i think bha you've clearly identified the need and uh, work with picky richard and others to uh, develop a resource to to meet that so i uh, just wanted to, to to acknowledge that and to thank you both thank you thank you so thank much you so thank you so much and i will send you the the link from the video and also the resources thank you bye, bye.